In a dark and spooky bushland along the banks of the Mary River, a group of people set out each night to search for an elusive creature. Rumoured to have piercing yellow eyes and strange markings. Oh, <laughs> looks like we found them. Sorry, guys. We're talking about the giant barred frog, and we're here to find out why this torch trading team come out in full force to take a look at this croaky critter. Robert. 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 Eva, you are super brave coming out here at night. It's a little bit spooky, but thankfully we have found what we are looking for, the giant barred frog, is that right? We have, yeah, there's one right there. And this is one of our endangered species in Australia, so we're very fortunate to find him. But we come out to this place three times every year in the summer season, especially to look for them so that we can make sure they're still around. It's all about the survey. Now tell me, what does the survey entail? So when we're out and about, we collect a whole lot of environmental data about where we are, what the creek is like. So we're right on the banks of a beautiful creek here. What it's doing and what, what the frog's doing. Is it um, calling out? Is it a male or a female? We're just your average, everyday frog Sherlock Holmes, hey? We are super <laughs> sleuths. <laughs> Lucky for us, this creature of the night does not shy away from the spotlight. Like true stars, they remain cool, calm and collected as we go about getting our data. These guys don't seem to mind us being nosy parkers. I mean, look at him just sitting there chilling whilst we sit here chilling. <laughs> Synergy, I like it. Now, how do you actually spot these guys out from the crowd? Well, we know what they, where they like to live. And so we go to the waterways, creeks, where they live. Mm -hmm. They're very um, specialised for creeks. So they'll only live within about 20 metres of the water's edge and in very good condition bush. And they will only live on the ground and they live in amongst the leaf litter. So we know where to go look. Oh, well, speaking of the leaf litter, these guys are the masters of hide and seek because their skin is basically the colour of the vegetation. It is, for a very good reason, because they don't really want to be eaten. Mm, so they're yeah. well camouflaged for that. Exactly. Well, I'm glad we've got these things on our heads. Yeah. But skin aside, they've also got some other features that help them make headlines. They <laughs> do. They're one of our most beautiful frogs. They're our biggest frog, one of our biggest frogs in Australia. They've also got gorgeous golden eyes and they've got lovely mottling colours on their back and bars on their back legs. Hmm, beautiful and gorgeous? Well, that's a matter of opinion. I'd say with their creepy looks and this eerie backdrop, they'd make the perfect cast for a horror film. But it's not a scary movie we're making. It's a conservation plan. OK, Eva, when the frog hunt is over and the torches are turned off, what happens to all the data once it's collected and it goes into the database? Right, oh, well, all that information is available to us to make decisions about where we put our effort because we want to conserve the habitat for these guys and maybe even make it better than it is in a lot of places because we want those frogs to stay around for a very long time. Forever and ever? Forever and ever would be ideal. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Wilders, there's a lot of croaking still going on out there, which means there are more frogs to survey. So, we better hop to it. Uh-oh. Um, uh, hey, Eva, there are only batteries out here, are there? Eva?